All right, I'm under the time gun. We'll see how we do. So the years 60 to 65, as you know, were years of hope and youthfulness. Started with the sit-ins, then Kennedy's election, Civil Rights Act of 64, Voting Rights Act of 65, LBJ's election, conservatives were dead forever. And that's when you arrived. But of course, from 66 to 71, everything changed. Backlash, war, Reagan is governor, Nixon is president, battles in the cities and on campus. All that mattered as far as how UCSC was shaped, but that wasn't the key factor. That was provided by the Kerr McHenry Smith vision of, as you know, you've heard a million times, small co colleges, very importantly, no big time sports, no fraternities, no sororities, no huge parking lots, although the parking lot part did not work out. To see what I mean about the distinctiveness of this campus and not just the spirit of the times, you got to remember how different UC Irvine and UC San Diego developed. The 21st century technology campus and the top-down grad program science kind of campus. But the tensions and uniquenesses at Santa Cruz really started at the very campus level. Over rules, rules like visitation, rules about uh, sexuality, drinking, and drugs. And here's the iron, and you were in trailers. And so all these opportunities and all these changes. But the irony is, the people that started this place, which you didn't appreciate, I didn't appreciate, many young faculty didn't appreciate, were very liberal people, even Dean McHenry, who were very worried about the conservatives. And McHenry knew and Kerr knew that all these conservatives knew they had been for Upton Sinclair in 1934, that McHenry had run as a liberal in 52 for Congress and got red baited. So they were very worried. But as you know, Dean was also uh, somewhat uptight. So, <laughs> but what's beautiful about it is they told you to have your own ideas. And when you did, they said, we don't like those ideas. And that's what happens constantly. And so you were immediately in generational conflict with them over uh, your living space. But that soon got all wrapped up, of course, with the farm workers, um, uh, with anti-war movement, and so on. But the important point that I want to try to emphasize to you about all that is, is that there was no competing institutions to fall back on because there was no sports, there were no jocks, there were no fraternity boys and sorority women and so on and so forth. And so that made for this very different situation. You know all the things that happened during that time period. I won't go over them, but they're all symbolized, of course, in your graduation. Uh, and all the defiance at that graduation and the degree for the Honorable Huey P. Newton with Herman Blake walking up there and accepting that degree. So by 1970, UCSC was a unique campus because activists did not have to compete with the uh, kinds of people I just named. And that image then attracted liberal students, and it radicalized those who arrived later. In 1972, which is the first time I have data for, 80 of our students said they were liberal or far left. That compared to the national average of 40% for incoming freshmen, and even berserkly was 57% only. So that number remained very high. And when things declined, we always stayed a more radical or left campus. In 2004, 60% of Santa Cruz students said they were liberal or far left. 30% in all public universities said that. Berkeley, 54%. And I want to drag in San Diego and Irvine, 44% and 38%. So you can see the dramatic difference between the whole mentality of the students that came here, that were shaped by here, uh, and so on. But there's a little more to the story. And you started that too. Because of all these tensions, because you wanted these freedoms, uh, off, you moved off campus. And that was part of what happened to change all of Santa Cruz and to change the campus in turn. Because what happened is, as you moved downtown, got to know your neighbors, got to know the faculty that lives next door and so on. You're in those big old Victorians and all. 
then you became part of the city, and especially your successors did so, people you knew that were freshmen and sophomores when you, you graduated. And basically what happened is, and you weren't part of this, I know, it happened right after you left, but these students in coalition, you students in coalition with the neighborhoods and the environmentalists stopped every major development that was proposed from 1969 forward and totally stymied the growth machine. They've stopped a big hotel on Lighthouse Field, which you can still go down and look at. But there are numerous examples of, of how then students made the difference. And then the great unexpected happened. 18 year olds got the vote in 1970. And students you knew then, but were younger, then went out and registered practically every student on this campus. And in 72, they all voted for McGovern. But then they started to vote in local elections. And that's, and, there was one other part to this. They had put the university inside the city limits simply to deliver water services. But that meant what was this campus? It was a giant Trojan horse <laughs> in the middle of the uh, staid city. And so sure enough, from that day on, environmentalists, students, and neighborhood activists protecting their neighborhoods had the pressure on this city. They did not take control of this city until 1981. And in 1981, a coalition of feminists, Greens, and two guys that called themselves socialist feminists, um, who obviously came after your time, uh, they uh, became the majority on the city council. And this became the leftmost city in the country without question. And for the next 15 years, they tried everything they could to do something socialist. But in the process, they did a lot of things liberal in terms of bringing social services. But more important in terms of the uniqueness of this campus was the way in which they shaped this campus because they were the opponents of this campus. They wouldn't let it do this, wouldn't let it do that, they ex wouldn't let it expand. They made sure students were treated right as far as buses and so on. And so the university ultimately had to cut a deal. It had to cut a deal as late as 2010 over water. Um, amazing deal for the university to provide basically by city laws, which they're above, as you know. So this is what happened uh, that made uh, kept Santa Cruz unique probably um, into the late uh, 1990s. It was, yes, a vision of hope. Yes, then the despair and the fight and the so on. Yes, it was the combat with uh, Clark Kerr and and, and Page, because you were more liberal and radical than they were. But it was also the unexpected of an 18-year-old vote and this campus being inside the city, which changed the city forever, which made it possible for this campus to remain the leftmost campus probably in the country, uh, at least until recently. Thank you very much.